In this video, we're going to be talking about aqueous electrolysis. If something's aqueous, it means it's dissolved in water. Now, water breaks down into hydrogen ions and hydroxide ions. So when we look at aqueous electrolysis, we have to remember that these two ions are always present. Let's do the electrolysis of aqueous sodium chloride. So we have sodium ions and chloride ions in addition to the ions created from water. Now all these ions in the solution can be divided into two categories. So the negative ions will try to move towards the anode and the positive ions will try to move towards the cathode. However, only one of each ion can move towards the electrodes. So there's a rule that we need to apply to decide which one goes to the electrode and which one stays in the solution. As for the anode, the first priority is for anything that's in group 7, such as bromine, chlorine, iodine, acetine, etc. The first priority is for any halogen. If there are no halogens in the solution, then hydroxide gets to go. At the cathode, first priority is for a metal that is less reactive than hydrogen. If there are no metals that are less reactive than hydrogen, then hydrogen goes. As a rule, the only metal that's less reactive than hydrogen that we have to know about is copper. Basically, that means first priority is for copper, otherwise, if there are any other metals, then hydrogen goes. So let's use these rules to find out which of these ions will move to the electrodes and which ones will stay in the solution. Let's start with the anode. So we can see we have chloride and hydroxide ions in solution. Now, since chloride is in group seven, it takes first priority and moves towards the electrode and turns back into its elemental form, chlorine gas. At the cathode, we have sodium ions and hydrogen ions. Now remember, we don't have copper, therefore sodium must be more reactive than hydrogen because the only metal that is less reactive than hydrogen is copper. Now sodium is more reactive than hydrogen. Or in other words, since sodium is not copper, it does not take first priority. Therefore, hydrogen goes to the electrode. Hydrogen therefore goes to the cathode and forms hydrogen gas. So therefore, we are left with a sodium hydroxide solution. Let's have a go at doing the electrolysis of potassium sulfate in aqueous conditions. Potassium sulfate breaks down into potassium ions and sulfate ions. And remember, in aqueous conditions, we produce hydrogen and hydroxide ions. So we have a set of positively and negatively charged ions. Now remember the rules. At the anode, first priority goes to anything that's in group seven, otherwise it's hydroxide. And as for the cathode, if a metal is less reactive than hydrogen, i.e. copper, that will go first. Otherwise, hydrogen will go. So starting with the anode, we can see that we don't have any halogens present. Therefore, hydroxide will go to the electrode. Now, this part's very important. When hydroxide goes to the electrode, you have to memorize the half equation. Now, usually we can work out the half equations for most elements. However, I would recommend memorizing the one I'm about to write down for hydroxide. As you can see, it's quite complicated. However, not to worry. The main thing is once you memorize this, whenever hydroxide goes, you can always just write down this equation. Now notice, you'll see something quite interesting. Notice that we have water and oxygen. Of course, water is going to remain in the solution. However, oxygen will be released as a gas from the electrode. Now, moving towards the cathode, we have hydrogen ions and potassium ions. Now, potassium is actually more reactive than hydrogen. Again, remember, we don't have copper. Therefore, we do not have a metal that is less reactive than hydrogen. The hydrogen ions will move towards the electrode and produce hydrogen gas. So we have potassium sulfate remaining in the solution. The half equation for hydrogen is very similar to the ones we've done already. So we start off with hydrogen ions and we produce hydrogen as a diatomic molecule. Now we can finally write the half equation for hydrogen, put a two there, and that is the half equation for hydrogen. Hey guys, if that video helped you, support our channel by liking, subscribing, and sharing it with your friends. And more importantly, if you still have questions, drop a post on our forum at examqa.com where I will personally be there to help answer your questions. Mohammed signing out.